Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, April 12th, 2022 budget workshop meeting of the Walt Township Board of Education. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Smythe, could we have the Sunshine Statement and roll call, please? Uh, yes, this is special meeting of the Walt Township Board of Education for which adequate notice under the Open Public Meeting Act is provided by a notice to CoStar, Asbury Park Press, Township Clerk's Office, all Walt Township Public Schools and approaching the Board Administration Office on February 10th, 2022. I'll take a roll call. <coughs> Mr. Buffer. Here. Mr. Hall. Here. Ms. Hodnett. She's on her way. Mr. Malice. Here. Mr. Nasser. Here. Ms. Sanfilippo. Here. Ms. Dyke. Mr. Wondrak? Here. Mr. Anderson? Here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, we will open up public comment for school related issues. Please come to the microphone and state your name for the record. Betsy Cross, I live in Wall Township. Just wondering, we're having a budget presentation, but there are no handouts for anybody here. And I did check online before I came over, and there was just this simple agenda without any attachments. Um, and I noticed that Mr. Smythe is handing out to everybody five minutes before it starts, the documents are gonna be going over tonight. So that just to me seems odd. You have an $80 million budget and nobody had a copy of it before uh, 612. Um, I don't even understand that. So maybe Joe, can you go over? Ask Mr. Adonisio, why in the world do you have an $80 million budget, not have a handout here for anybody, and you want $50 million uh, in November or December, you're gonna do something offshoot for a referendum? It'll never happen. I mean, this is absurd. Other towns have had budget meetings, handouts, and you're just getting them right before the meeting starts. Um, I just had somebody, I'm getting a bunch of text messages, um, and it says, Deal Wall High School Parents, this email serves as an update regarding the Wall Township School Administration. Finally, it's April, good to get an update. Please be advised that Mr. Kevin Davis will serve as the acting principal of Wall High School while Ms. Churchio is on leave. Should you have any questions relating to your child in this transition, please contact your child's guidance counselor. That went out at 5.46 p.m. So I don't know if the board's even aware, I, I have no idea. So people are wondering what's going on, why is this going out at 5.46? what type of leave, sick leave, vacation. Um, you know, when I, I think I went over this last month that, you know, Mr. Smythe, Mr. Han, uh, Tracy Handerhan and Rose have a lot of vacation. So, I mean, as of um, 2, 3, 15, I have pages and pages of, you know, days that people are taking off, and yet you know, we're in the middle of this crisis, and I mean, the amount of days that we're given for vacation are absurd. Um, and Rose still has 154 sick days left, two and a half personal, 25 vacation, 90 vacation bank, three floating holiday. So, you know, this is the problem. When you give these ridiculous contracts to people, they check out and they never come back for a year and we keep paying them. And people are not happy. I went back and listened to that December 14th meeting when those two students were up here talking. Nothing has changed. People are sending me text messages of F you in the bathroom, F you Wall High School. It's a disgrace. And Brian Smythe, uh, he shouldn't even be here. He should have been let go years ago. 
back in 2012 when Hebel was gone. Um, his sick bank, his illegal contract online that Mr. Smy that Mr. Adonisio tells us was board approved and it wasn't. It was, so you're stating an inaccurate statement. It what, was approved, the county was superintendent it? approved it, the Board of Education voted on it and approved it. Oh, for what the date? 15th time. What date? That what was date? already discussed. Mr. Smythe gave you that. What at a date was meeting. that? Oh, Mr. Smythe, why don't you tell us? Please, After my time is up, please continue. you can tell me the date please that continue. Mr. Smythe's full contract was approved in public because that's an absolute lie, Ralph, and you're very good at that. No, it's absolutely false, Ms. Cross. What All you're right, saying. so Mr. And Smythe can meeting, give the date. You were here. Of course I was here. Yeah. And, and you didn't approve it. And you just don't listen. Um, and Tracy Handerhan, the problems with her vacation calendar that Mr. Adam, Adam Nasser agreed to. Um, so you can answer the question. People want to know what type of leave is Rose going to be out on? I think it's a fair question, very reasonable, that you don't have every newspaper calling you tomorrow about what's going on. It's a fair, fair question. So I, I don't know if you just have your um, Channel 12 news interview set up for tomorrow, Mr. Adonisio, but why don't you tell the public here, it is being live streamed because you're not live streaming it, which is another embarrassment to the school district. Thank you, Ms. Cross, your time is up. Th and as with all things personnel, we do not discuss personnel issues because they're private. Excuse me, Mr. Adonisio, I would yes, like to address, this is not a budget presentation. This is a budget workshop session of the Board of Education for the entire board to uh, conduct business. And it is held in public so that the public has the opportunity to view the board in action as we're preparing our budget for the 2022-2023 uh, school year. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we will close public comment. We will move on to budget discussion. I would like to welcome our Director of uh, Technology and Information and applications, Mr. John Hyam. I would like to welcome Mr. Sean Cranson, Director of Human Resources, and welcome Dr. Donna Rando, the Assistant Superintendent Interim for Curriculum Instruction. This evening, we are going to begin with technology, and uh, without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. John Hyam to the mic. Mr. Hyam. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Handerhan. Thank you, Board of Education. For excuse me, Board of Education, for the opportunity to, uh, to review the budget with you. Uh, in the slide deck that you have, uh, have received, uh, the first slide uh, highlights uh, my goal for technology budget for the 2022-23 school year. Um, core information, IT infrastructure, secure, resilient, adaptable to meet the current anticipated future needs of the district. Um, one thing I'd like to highlight uh, in there is the uh, cybersecurity component and uh, how important it is for the district. Um, in, in, the, in, the past, in the past year, the, uh, there's been over 3,100 uh, ransomware attacks within the, the state of New Jersey. Uh, we, um, a, as a school district, have multi-layers in place to help protect, the, uh, help protect the school district. Fortunately, we haven't had any uh, you know, ransomware attacks. However, there are, are, on a daily basis, a number of uh, uh, threats, if you will, that the school district does get presented with. So a good component or a good uh, significant component of the budget does address those uh, cybersecurity uh, concerns. And those concerns are not unique to the, to the Wall Township School District by any means. Uh, these would be the same threats or, or concerns that any other school district in New Jersey uh, would, be, uh, would be encountering. Uh, the next slide highlights, um, and what I did was I, I broke it down into major categories of expenses. So I tried to chunk together um, things that have a common theme. Uh, the first one is infrastructure upgrades, uh, totaling uh, approximately $467,000. Uh, within that 
component, we were looking at a district-wide replacement or upgrade of our wireless infrastructure for the upcoming school year. Uh, the replacement of the wireless access points that are used uh, essentially by everyone on a daily basis. Uh, the existing uh, hardware um, did go out of production several years ago, and um, we do see some challenges with that, and specifically also to the security side for securing the, the Wi-Fi network. Um, so we're looking to, uh, to bring those online um, this summer. Uh, the other component of that would be the wireless screen sharing hardware that I highlighted. Uh, this would be hardware that would be uh, attached to the ceiling mounted projectors, giving the, the, the staff members or students in the room the ability to move about the room and connect their devices, Chromebooks, uh, to the uh, ceiling mounted projector. Next slide uh, highlights uh, student devices. We're looking at a replacement of approximately uh, one fifth of the uh, student Chromebooks for the upcoming school year. Um, that comes out to approximately about 660 devices, I believe, that will be uh, bring online. Uh, also, there might be some uh, iPad devices that would be in, in there, but the majority of those will be uh, Chromebooks, uh, totaling $355,950. Uh, $355, the next slide. Uh, highlights uh, some what I called productivity, collaboration, communication, and student management tools. Uh, this $296,550 expense would cover things like our Google Workspace for Education, uh, our, our student information system, uh, the fees for our, our Zoom meetings, uh, our website hosting and mass notification platforms, our internet uh, for the entire district and phone service, and our printer management. The next slide uh, highlights cybersecurity and data backup at 225, excuse me, $222,000 and 50. Uh, that would include components such as the domain name system content and security filtering that's used on a daily basis uh, throughout the district. All these things are essentially used on a daily basis. Distribution, excuse me, distributed denial of service, uh, DNS service and web application firewall. Windows and Mac uh, endpoint security, which is essentially the, the antivirus devices that are installed on those uh, machines. Our uh, firewall and router and offsite data backup. The next major category is uh, categorizes various maintenance and repairs at 179,000. Some of the components of that may be the, the voice over internet uh, phones that are on uh, throughout the district on, on desks. Uh, network equipment service support and maintenance. This would be uh, an annual service contract we have with the vendor of our switches for service and next day replacement in case of failure. Our ceiling mount projectors, miscellaneous ethernet cabling, and unforeseen, uh, unforeseen items. The next slide is related to fi uh, excuse me, physical security at 129,750. Uh, replacement of RFID badges and readers as needed. Uh, new uh, workstations for our security uh, security system, cameras, perimeter control and intrusion alarm repairs, licenses and services, and our district emergency uh, preparedness program license for that software. Uh, the last slide in the deck uh, highlights some items that um, that did not. Um, we're not included in this year's budget, but are, are still items that we would like to uh, like to bring online uh, at a total of three hundred seventy-seven thousand two hundred dollars. And we, we may be we're going to be exploring uh, some of the grants that the district has to see if uh, we can incorporate some of those uh, some of these items into there. Uh, so the items that are highlighted on there: the elementary school gymnasiums, audio and visual systems. Uh, Chromebooks for instructional paras. Uh, these would be the same teacher Chromebooks that the teachers are using uh, in the classroom. Uh, one of the classrooms at the intermediate school uh, should be redone, the computer lab in there. Some additional computers or replacement computers rather for the high school music department. Uh, we're looking at implementing uh, a pilot program with instructional technology uh, in conjunction with the special education department. Uh, a failover load balancing internet service and then uh, finally, uh, training to uh, prevent phishing uh, attacks or social engineering against our uh, staff. So that concludes the slide deck. I'd be happy to 
review or highlight any items that any members have questions mr hall yeah thank you mr hyman um yes, <clears throat> based on i know you're relatively new to the position um this year uh, but based on your um, experience in the tech world, do you feel that um, right now Wall Township is, is positioned well? In, in other words, have we are we are we playing catch up, or are we were were or are we where we want to be um, and have been? In, in other words, I know you're you know saying that we get like law schools, you know, you have these uh, outside uh, people trying to always trying to get into your computers and things and. I'm just wondering, you know, from, you know, the parents at home, like obviously cybersecurity in today's world is hugely important. So I'm just trying to get a feel from, you know, you coming in new, being in the district uh, in this position, what, what's your thoughts on where we are and, and, and how well prepared we are um, as a district to handle that? And, and do, do, do we need to do anything more budget wise to get you to be more comfortable in that position. Thank you for the question. Uh, so New Jersey cybersecurity communications integration cell does classify the, the cyber threat to New Jersey as high as a, as a general as a general overview. Uh, we here at the Wall Scouts School District have made tremendous um, advances over the, over the past uh, school year uh, to the point where I feel I feel comfortable where we are uh, right now. And again, you, you know, it, it's not something we're ever going to uh, kind of rest on our laurels. You know, we're always going to need to keep our eyes open and look for new vulnerabilities that, that do pop up on a, on a daily, weekly basis and, and address those things. Uh, I do feel with the budget that I did present uh, to the board uh, moving forward for the next year um, that we will be in a good place from a, a cybersecurity, uh, you know, perspective. Um, I would not... I wouldn't have any immediate uh, concerns. If I did, um, you know, I would have I would have uh, voiced those and/or asked uh, in the budget for for those items. Yes, sir. Any other members? Mr. Ram, I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, and, and we've talked about this previously. What kind of when we talk about because a few years ago, as many people are aware, we were bombarded by outside entities that kind of shut things down a little bit, made things a little difficult for a period of time. And they were doing it to a number of public entities in New Jersey at the time. What, what are we looking at from outside attacks on a weekly basis, if you, if, or daily, whatever, what, if you have a number, just to, so people get an understanding of, you know, you see numbers like this, but it translates into protection. Sure. Um, with all due respect, I'd like to hold specifics on the numbers, uh, no, you know, confidential yes. to, um, but as it, on the generally, we have multi layers in place. Uh, the, the most outer reaching for our um, website and our Genesis student information system is is protected by a web application firewall. That would be the very first layer for someone to access those uh, those sites. Um, there are in the in the thousands of um, requests that are blocked um, malicious malicious requests that are blocked on a daily basis at that outer outermost layer. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, um, uh, you know, our, our edge router will we'll do some more blocking. We have... Uh, no, I we have multiple yeah. layers. That's... Yes, sir. Th but it's thousands. Yes, sir. So we're, we're doing a good job in that respect. Well, you're doing a good job with your hard work. We are, sir. Thank you. Um, do the, our wireless points in, in yes. the buildings, uh, we've been wireless for a while. I mean, how will... You know about how old they are. So I know that they went out of. We could, they stopped selling those about two to three years ago. Um, so to buy replacement devices now, we're looking at refurbished uh, items, essentially to replace with the exact same model. Um, also, the system we're looking to will be a cloud-based controller system. Um, so the, the actual physical access points that we're putting in, um, we estimate a. They actually just went into production in December of 21. So it's a, it's a new item. Um, the man, the uh, excuse me, the manufacturer rep is estimating a seven to ten year life on those specific devices that we'll be installing. Uh, the other thing that's important to know with this web-based um, uh, controller, if we need to replace one-offs with different models, it'll be a seamless process. So, um, you know, we can we can address that kind of on a rolling basis as needed. That's good, and I think a lot of people aren't aware that Chromebooks they have a life cycle and it's really sure. not that long. Um, 
can you talk about a little bit about what the lifespan of a Chromebook is and, and even an iPad, and that's why we're just not buying them for the sake of buying them. Yes, but sir. We, we typically like to, r to roll out a, a five-year, um, I like to implement a five-year uh, replacement cycle on the, on the devices. Uh, remember, these devices are used, you know, on a daily basis, uh, you know, by the students. Um, they're also charged on a daily basis, and we're also looking at the amount of cycles that a battery can be charged and recharged and the length of time that they can, you know, hold those charges as well as the general wear and tear. And it gets to be a point of uh, diminishing return on, on repair costs versus, you know, replacement with, with new items. So um, the other component to keep in mind is uh, Google will uh, set an end-of-life date as to when they will stop updating those devices, which is important that we, that we take into account also. So regardless of, of what timeline we would like to put in place, whether it's more or less aggressive, we also need to be cognizant of Google's timeline as to when they will stop supporting uh, the respective models of the device. Typically that's around five years. F uh, five, six a year uh, margin. The, uh, for example, um, so yeah, it, the 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 Chrome the teacher Chromebooks that we just brought online, for example, they're a, a, a 2028. Uh, so that was a, a seven. You know, we're looking at about a seven year, six year, mm -hmm. uh, you know, window on on those devices. And my final question that I wasn't sure about was, um, what is a failover load balanced internet service? So currently we have one internet service provider, just like as you have an internet service provider for your private residence, we have, we have one for the school district. It's a little bit more industrial, as you can understand. Um, if there's a problem with that uh, provider um, providing us service, um, we're at their mercy. So um, I would like to uh, bring on a second provider, a different company, a, a different connection, if you will, so that we can essentially uh, balance the load between those on a daily basis, and then as needed, uh, fail over to one completely if one goes down. Um, so it could prevent us from having an outage, depending upon what the scope is that the, our, our internet service provider is, uh, you know, ha experiencing. Great, thank you. Did uh, Ms. Hunt. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, Pleasure. I just have, I know the budget is a massive lift, and there's a lot of consideration that goes into planning it. How do you decide what moves over to your tier two request that will not make the budget, but you think might go through with grants? Um, f the first priority for me was making sure that we have a, a, an infrastru IT infrastructure in place that's gonna be uh, secure, resilient, um, and, and, and meeting, the, meeting the, the utilitarian, meeting the most needs of, of most of our students as possible. So some of those items on there were, were, were smaller, less impactful, or, or uh, you know, components of the entire population. Um, so that's how it kind of got, it got classified in that, in that manner. Okay. Um, but the, the, the things that were included in there were things I obviously felt were essential and were essential uh, for, the, for the entire district. And then I noticed like on the tier two, there's uh, purchases that involve maybe other schools or other programs or other leaders in the district. Do you, do you have conversations with them about what moves over? And yeah, I, yes, I, absolutely. You know, I, I've had discussions, um, uh, you know, about, you know, in, in, putting the, in putting the budget together and the, and the impacts of, of those uh, decisions. Okay, thanks. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mel. Okay, thank you so high for being here. Mr. Uh, can you tell me, because I'm not sure, wh what is exactly the, uh, the district's bring your own device policy? Does it differ from elementary to intermediate school to high school? Yes, sir. Uh, so the, the policy is that currently anyone can bring any device into, into the district and, and utilize that. Now we do provide the devices for all of our students to use. Um, most of the time, the bring your own device applies to students using cell phones within the, within the district. Um, but it, and a, as it stands currently, and this is, this is something that we, we continue to revisit on a rolling basis, um, anybody can bring any device in. Now we are making headway with uh, requiring uh, 
users of our, of our network to log on to our network in order to, to use it. Uh, currently, as, as it stands tonight across the district, you know, it is still an open, uh, open network. Is there any incentive to students bringing their own devices so we wouldn't have to have as many Chromebooks? A student may bring a device in that is um, different or more advanced than, than, than what we have. And we do have that happen on a, on a, on a, uh, a select basis. We do try to um, th discourage that or identify what the reason is that they're bringing in, in, their, in their own device. Yes, sir? Anybody else? Seeing none. I'm sorry, Mr. Sam Pulpo. I, I know we were in curriculum the other day, and I know the juniors were taking uh, the tests, and they were unable to use their own um, uh, devices that they bring in, whether it's a MacBook or whatever else it is for testing. Um, I don't know if that's something you can speak to or. Absolutely. Um, w when we're talking about our standardized state testing, there's, there's, it's a very rigid uh, environment that needs to be in place for that. Uh, there is a specific app that is uh, installed on all of the student devices. And there's a, a set procedure for them to launch that app so it blocks out all the other functions of the Chromebook. So essentially the student is just presented with the test itself. So even if a student you know, used their MacBook for however many days of the school year when they came in for that specific testing, they would still have to have their own uh, yes, sir. device. Yeah. Anybody else? No, Mr. Hine, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cranston-Fine? Thank you. Thank, thank you. So thank you again for having me tonight. I know we spoke, I don't know how many weeks ago, about, a, about six weeks ago possibly, um, about the personnel budget. So I'm just gonna kind of recap what we talked about very briefly and then go into what we've done since that point in time. So just to go through it again, what our goal of the personnel budget was, was to maximize efficiency in personnel. Um, and what does that mean? We make sure the district is staffed appropriately. And what we did was a line by line review of each staff member. Um, and most importantly, we did not want to eliminate any programs. So th that was big. We didn't really talk about that the last time, but we want to have no elimination of programs in this. We just want to make sure it's efficient. So. Before uh, where I left you last time was, we said, what, what, what happens next? Um, and what happened next was, we, I went through the line by line of, of, of the budget, every single part, and then Dr. Handerhan and I met with each building principal um, and, and assistant principals at the intermediate and high school level. So we met on the weeks of 328 and 44, uh, respectively, did the elementary uh, first. We met with those principals individually, we went through what their budget looks like, we made sure that their budget looked correct, and then we, we broke down um, their staff for next year uh, in, pretty, in pretty great detail. Um, and then we told them what, what basically is gonna happen just so they had an overview of what's gonna happen at the intermediate and the high school level as well. Uh, then we met with the high school principal and the assistant principals, and we met with the intermediate principal and, and her assistants as well. We broke down what's happening at, at those levels and where does that look. Um, at this point in time, we did not talk about people. We talked about positions. So it was very important. So they understood that we talked about uh, positions and positions only. Um, moving forward, we're going to have a meeting um, the week of 425. And we're going to discuss in that meeting. We're gonna have every administrator in the room and we're gonna discuss that meeting. We're gonna have to discuss people at that point in time. And we'll talk about a little bit in a couple minutes what that looks like. So we go to the, the next slide. Um, <clears throat> gave you a little bit of a vocab lesson last time what a FTE was. So FTE again is, the acronym FTE stands for full-time equivalent. Um, what I did not tell you was what we currently have last time. So we, in our current year budget, where we're sitting right now in the 21-22 school year budget, we have 752.41 FTE in the, in the general fund. So a couple things. What the general fund means is pretty much all of our employees minus our food service department and our RAP program. The food service department and the RAP program go into, Mr. Smythe, can you help me out a little bit? Enterprise, Enterprise Fund, thank you. That's the 60, I believe. Um, so they, they are excluded from that, at, but we have 752.41 FT. So you might ask, how do we get a .41 FT again? 
a lot of different ways. We get a 0.41 FTE. We, we have teachers that teach three days a week, so that's, you know, they have 0.6 right there. Um, we have teachers that do half. We have teachers that might teach, like even next year, we have teachers that might teach a certain number of blocks out of their, out of the number of total blocks in a day, so it might not come out to exactly a 0.5 or a 0.6, might come out to a little bit uh, weirder decimal there. Our proposed budget uh, for next year, the 22-23 school year, our proposed budget is 730.21 FTE in the general fund. So what this means is there's gonna be a net decrease of 22.2 positions in the proposed budget. Um, what, this, what the district's gonna save just in salaries alone in those 22.2 positions um, using our opening step five salary, which is our opening step, um, $954,462 will be saved in, in salaries alone in next year's budget. It's important to note, and I'll talk about this probably again in a, in a minute or so, we are trying to reduce through attrition. So attrition meaning retirements, uh, resignations, and so far to date, we, we do have a handful of retirements, um, and we do have a handful of resignations of people that are res resigning near the end of the year, or possibly resi resigning in the next couple months, and Dr. Hander and I are looking at um, possibly not filling them for the rest of the school year, because it's, it's, it would sound silly to hire somebody for six weeks to, to let them go. So if we can manage for the rest of the school year, we're, we're trying to do that as well. Um, so we're trying to reduce through attrition and retirements resignations that will help us create our new staffing profile for going forward for next year. The next slide talks about the additions that we have for the next school year budget. We actually added six and a half positions to the budget. Um, the one we already board approved the last meeting was a director of intervention services. We are adding a nurse to the high school. We thought it was very important to for a, a, about a thousand student school to have two nurses, so we're adding a nurse to Wall High School. Uh, what that means, though, is the the floater that's normally in the budget that's floating between seven schools will mostly be now be floating between six schools. And what that floater does is, if everybody's here um, on a given day, then most likely she spends a lot of her time at the at the high school or middle school. So next year will be spending most of her time at the the, the intermediate school. Um, when there is people absent though, the floater is the first person called to cover absence. We, we do have sub-nurses and we are trying to re increase our, our sub-nurse profile. So we do have a posting out there. We're, ho we're hoping to get one or two for next year. We are adding uh, two media specialists. I broke it down in this slide as uh, breaking it between schools um, because that's what it's gonna look like. We're adding two media specialists at the elementary level. So one will probably be split between two of the buildings and the other one will be split between the other two buildings. Those buildings are yet to be determined. I know I wrote down the splitting here, uh, but it, it all depends on the number of homerooms and number of students, and we're gonna look into that. We're adding a security liaison to the budget. Um, as you guys know, we're, that person's already um, been board approved and is actually starting after spring break, but it's, it's really a, a new position for next year's budget. Um, we are adding a Spanish teacher at the elementary level, 0.5, so meaning half time Spanish teacher. And then we're adding a, these can be combined if you really want to, we're adding a half a registrar and a half a technology secretary. So we're looking really to hire one secretary that's gonna do half their time as a registrar and half the time as, as technology. Currently, um, Mr. Hyam has a half a secretary and currently uh, a registrar is also deeply involved with doing, um, being superintendent secretary. So w it's, a, it's a need, it's not a full-time need, but it's definitely a half-time need for this district of this size to have a, a registrar. <coughs> On the next slide, we're talking about the, the positions eliminated in the budget. Um, as I told you before, the, the net decrease is 22.2. Um, so since we're adding six and a half, what we're actually eliminating is, is 28.7 positions. Um, breaking that down, we have 13.7 positions at the high school level, eight positions at the intermediate level, four positions at the elementary level, and three positions in operations. Our overall staffing cost um, from 21-22 budget, our total salaries in this year's budget is $48,944,445, um, and our proposed number for next year is $49,571,617. I probably should have done this before I got here, but that's about 1.6 million. I did do the percentage though, it's a 1.3% increase. Um, what that looks like is a couple slides back when I said that we're uh, saving $954,000, um, though we're also increasing by 1.6 million for raises. 
So that's why it, that's why it's going up about. Did I say 1.6? It's going up 600 thousand um, dollars. So that's where we get the 1.3 percent. In terms of benefits, um, overall benefits for this year's budget is 14 million 144. 114,877, and then benefits for next year is $14,809,340. So that's an increase of 4.9%, which is, is fairly good when you look at overall other districts. Um, the average for most districts is in the eight, is in the eight to 10% range, so 4.9%. And that helps with obviously less staff, but there's other efficiencies that we're looking at too. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming out, Mr. Cranston. Um, no problem. Yeah, the first thing you know, obviously, that jumps out at you is uh, you know, uh, net twenty-two uh, positions being eliminated, and I just want to make sure that um, while while obviously it's important to the budget for 22, 22 positions, but this was really not driven by budget. This was driven by a deep dive into the actual <clears throat> efficiency of the schools and the personnel being used in the correct way to make sure that each each person was doing, um, you know, the job that they were intended to do, you know, hired for in the most efficient way. So we didn't have a teacher or, or a custodian or whatever position that we're talking about. We didn't have someone doing, you know, maybe only half of what they that, okay. that, that they should have been type of thing. Um, so it was driven by right sizing as opposed to Oh, we have to cut 22 people because you know we need to save money. It was more about getting the right number of people in the right number of positions to to to, to do the work, and the byproduct of that was how it flowed into the budget was a savings. But that wasn't the driver. It wasn't like, hey, go out and find me 22 right. positions so we can save Correct. on the budget. It was a it was a it was a deep dive that 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 uh, I know that um, this district and this board has been trying to get to but with all the other stuff going on it's been a it's been a major challenge to to do that um, and, and you know you bringing you on was one of the um, benefits of that was to be able to have somebody that could actually go in and look at um, the, the, the the workload of each uh, employee um, and and their and their skill set and their and their ability to do what the what the job re required and to say how many of these people do we need to effectively teach the children of Walt Township, this is what it is, and then the budget side kind of flows from that. that so I just want to make sure that, that everybody yeah, you, understands you, that, that that's kind of where we're at. We're not, hey, you got a directive from us to go cut 22 people. That was not the case. It was you You came to us and said, we think, I think this is the what this school should be staffed at to accurately uh, uh, you know, educate the children of Walt Township. And that, that's sort of two different things, but I want to make sure that yeah. So we're you, on the same you page. you're absolutely correct. What what we did was um, I don't know the exact uh, student population or where it was off the top of my head um, at the highest level at the high school or the intermediate school level, um, but we did look at the the number of staff that we have for the current number of people, and you know looking in the deep dive. So when you mean deep dive, what I did was we we looked into uh, Genesis, which is the student and the schedules, and see see what this class size look like. So elementary is very basic, right? So elementary, um, 100 kids in grade four, four teachers, 25 kids per class, we're like, okay. Or five, five teachers, 20 kids per class, okay. So those are easy. The, the, middle school, the middle school is a little more difficult and the high school level is a little more difficult. So what we did was, you know, you can take any department and, you know, and you say, I don't wanna pick on any department, but let's say a, a department has to teach five uh, classes per their, um, contract, we take the number of teachers in that department, let's say there's 16, you multiply by the five that you have to do, you have 80 classes. If there's a thousand kids in the high school, divided by that 80 classes, we're, av we're averaging 12 and a half kids in the class, which is very low. Um, and when there's, when there's an average of 12 and a half, that means, yeah, there are classes of 18, but that means there's also classes of six. And six is just not a right, a correct way to, to have it. So then we did even a deeper dive and actually looked into individual classes and saw that there's classes running at very, very low numbers. Um, so that's, that's when that part happened that I, I brought to Dr. Handerhan and we, we did this, this staffing and then we looked at when I did individual meetings um, with all the principals and then Dr. Handerhan and I met with the principals again to go over what the, the final results are. Um, so you're absolutely correct with that. Is there, uh, Ms. Hodnick. I think you answered most of my question but I was gonna ask you Mr. Cranston, um, 
when we look at positions that are being lost, you did calculate across all buildings that class size will not be negatively impacted. It'll remain in a good place. Like Yeah, so the elementary level, um, as you can just tell by what I read, the elementary level, um, there's four positions lost. Off the top of my head, I think all four are non-certified positions. Um, so, yeah, so class size and elementary level are going to stay pretty much exactly the same, which is, which is important. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about that as one of our factors. The intermediate level, yeah, the class size are, might go up um, a little bit, but not in any drastic way. Because when we're talking about the eight positions, they're, it's, it, it's spread out between different um, groups of, of okay. teachers. So the, the class sizes, if anything, some of the classes will be healthier for the students. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Seeing none, Mr. Okay. Cranston, anything else? No, nothing else to share, thank you. Thank you, appreciate thank you. it. Dr. Andrea? Thank you, Mr. Adnizio. Thank you, Mr. Hyam. Thank you, Mr. Cranston. Um, at this point, I would like to uh, turn this evening over to our business administrator to discuss um, uh, departments in his particular area. So, Mr. Smythe? Okay, thank you. Uh, really, the other category on the agenda is the maintenance, uh, maintenance department and capital uh, in improvements. However, before going to that, because there isn't a whole lot there in, in this year's budget, um, the last time we met and discussed the budget, we had a, uh, let's say with the budget shortfall, our revenues were approximately $6 million below what we were projecting as our appropriations. You know, we had been working since uh, those, through those workshop meetings uh, with the administration uh, in, in the district in, in, in balancing the budget so that the tentative budget that was approved uh, would in fact be balanced and submitted to the Department of Education. Uh, with the handouts, of first, it's what we uh, provide uh, on a regular basis to the Board of Education. It's also what was discussed at the uh, April Board of Education meeting, and uh, I will point out that the documents that were submitted tonight to the board have been handed out at the committees to the respective um, uh, committees at the beginning of the month. So with regard to the revenue and appropriations, um, this has been adjusted to be balanced for the tentative budget. Overall, I could probably easiest way to put it is revenues went up 4 million, appropriations went down 2 million, and that's how we balance that $6 million um, deficit. Uh, in, in doing so, on the revenue side, our tax levy was unchanged. Uh, we were at the 2%. Uh, we are still not using any of the bank's uh, tax levy that is available to the district, which is 820, just over, uh, just under $828,000, uh, but that is not utilized in this budget uh, or the tentative budget that was approved. Uh, our tuition estimates uh, remain the same. Uh, our miscellaneous was essentially the same. There was a, a minor adjustment for the purposes of balancing the budget. Uh, where the revenues increased is one, was in our state aid, went up $465,000 this year from uh, or projected for next year as opposed to the current school year. And then the other uh, $3.5 million uh, came in the form of using our budgeted fund balance as well as our reserve accounts. You know, with regard to our budgeted fund balance, we're typically uh, on an annual basis in and around a million dollars, 1.1. We'll push it to 1.4 uh, for the purposes of balancing the budget if we don't want to utilize bank cap or, or pressure the tax levy. Uh, but in this instance, if you recall previous discussions, uh, partly because of the pandemic, school districts are allowed to maintain a 4% surplus as opposed to the regular 2% surplus. Uh, originally, it was going to uh, not continue to be available to districts into the 22-23 school year. So districts that did opt to utilize the 4% for surplus uh, was going to have to utilize it or put into the reserve accounts. However, uh, districts are able to maintain the 4% uh, into the 22-23 school year. However, it does give us um, some flexibility in this budget. And you know, in, in looking at that revenue source, we wanted to look at a one-time cost as opposed to trying to fund recurring costs um, that we will incur on an annual basis, you know, because we never want to fund that type of uh, appropriation with a revenue that's not 
also going to be recurring or going to exist on an annual basis. So uh, Mr. Hyam was referring to uh, some of the items within the technology budget, uh, the replacement of the wireless access points, and help me with the projector. Yes, our uh, device is to allow uh, staff members to, or students, to connect to the ceiling mount projectors to project their screens onto the board. Yes, and I, I think that's about, it's just under $470,000 was that expense. That, in, in funding that, we identified that that would be funded through the use of increasing our budgeted fund balance. Uh, it's funded through our allowable surplus. Um, beyond that, uh, and we've discussed this in, in our committee. We basically our entire capital projects budget, uh, which is $2.1 million, is funded from a drawdown from our capital reserve account. Um, you know, we talk about it at every budget workshop meeting, at our FNF committee meetings. Uh, you know, a district of this size, the dollar amount that we want to have in our annual school budget for the purposes of capital improvements. You know, ideally it would be a million dollars. We kind of settle at you know seven hundred fifty thousand on an annual basis, with the idea that uh, we'll supplement if we have projects uh, that are going to exceed that annual dollar amount. We would supplement it uh, with a withdrawal from the capital reserve account. However, um, you know there was as part of the um, you know goal or uh, mission statement of this budget was to keep the tax increase in check. Um, and therefore, the 100% of the capital budget is funded from a drawdown uh, from the capital reserve account. So that was an increase of 2.1 million alone. Uh, our, our maintenance budget, uh, which is uh, just under 700,000, 694 and change, is funded by a maintenance reserve withdrawal of $600,000. Um, so again, we were relying heavily on the reserve accounts to keep to balance this budget and to not utilize the bank cap that is available. And lastly, the other reserve account is our emergency reserve account, which we are permitted to use for health care increases um, in excess of 4%. Uh, we need to obtain DOE, uh, Department of Education approval to utilize that drawdown on our emergency reserve account for the purposes of health benefits, which we've submitted as part of our uh, submission process with the state. Uh, and we are still waiting on approval of that, but that is within our proposed budget at this point. It was part of our tentative budget that was approved, um, but that is a $451,000 drawdown. And again, the idea of putting, uh, placing funds or transferring funds into our emergency reserve account at year end, um, we utilize the, the balance that's available in our health benefits account or other personnel benefit accounts uh, and the idea is we put funds into the emergency reserve for that exact purpose to offset cost increases in our health benefit uh, line accounts. Uh, and then on the appropriation side, uh, Mr. Krantz has already touched on uh, personnel because uh, from the budget we were looking at in January, February, and we were looking at projections, uh, uh, personnel uh, salaries were approximately a million dollars higher. We looked at personal benefits. We looked at our health benefit line account where our broker was originally recommending an increase of a million dollars for our health benefits. Uh, uh, we met numerous times. We uh, had them review our experience rating over the past 12 months. Uh, and each month where, because we're self-insured, we get to see what our claims come in. Uh, we reduced that in half. Uh, so our projected claims increase uh, is only approximately a half a million dollars. So that was um, uh, $1.5 million that was uh, make up part of the $2 million reduction in appropriations. And I would venture to say, aside from miscellaneous throughout the budget, the other half a million dollars came from Mr. Himes' technology, probably that last slide that was presented tonight. Um, but that's how we balance the budget for the, uh, in, in order for the board to approve the tentative budget. And that's the budget that's moving forward uh, for the public hearing. Any questions on that part of it? Okay. Does that mean I'm too thorough? All right. Um, and then lastly is the uh, capital required maintenance. Uh, again, we're, the FNF committee is in the process of reviewing and developing our long range facility plan. We had our facility condition assessment. 
uh, and we're identifying projects to be included in annual school budgets as well as, um, I'll use the term because it's there, uh, in a proposed referendum. And we really have to review the projects that would be funded through, um, uh, through either the referendum or the annual school budget. When you go through a referendum, uh, we have to keep in mind that we get 40% state aid for those projects that qualify. Um, so in looking at the projects we would include in the referendum as opposed to an annual school budget, if it's a project that will qualify for state aid, we would prefer to uh, have that project included in the referendum as opposed to the annual school budget because we don't receive that state aid um, uh, of 40% when it is in the annual school budget. So the projects we're looking to include uh, from a capital project uh, is our two projects, or rather large projects. Uh, uh, we have paving at the Allenwood Elementary School and paving at the high school. Uh, specifically at the high school, it would be the student lot or the west side. Um, our estimates from the architect are $500,000 for Allenwood School, and actually the high school is between $1.5 and $1.9 million. Uh, but these are projects that would not be eligible for uh, state aid if they were in fact included in a referendum. And that state aid comes in the form of debt service aid. Uh, but these projects, being paving projects, they're not educational in nature. Uh, they're not within the school building. Uh, they, they would not qualify. So these would be the type of projects that you would include in an annual budget as opposed to a referendum. And that's why they're included here. And again, these are uh, projected estimates from the architect. Uh, we will, uh, our first uh, choice or preference in performing these projects is to do a shared service agreement with Monmouth County uh, Public Works and Engineering uh, for them to perform the work. Uh, we uh, pay them as a shared service and we purchase uh, the asphalt as a material through uh, state contract uh, uh, from a vendor such as Stavola. That's who the county works with and uh, we anticipate that we'll have some cost savings and what the board will have the ability to do at that point is depending on uh, what the costs come in for these projects, uh, we have the ability to out, uh, appropriate or reallocate those funds for other projects that the board uh, deems necessary in the 22-23 school year. Uh, again, keeping in mind that they would be the projects that would not be eligible for any type of aid if funded differently. Um, and also to note, because these are being funded 100% by the uh, drawdown on the capital reserve account, uh, if the funds are unused as part of the annual school budget, it is required that those funds are returned to the capital reserve account. Uh, just in case anyone's concerned that we're budgeting $2 million and we are optimistic or hopeful that we will not be, uh, that we'll be able to perform these projects more cost effectively. Uh, you know, we do not have the ability, districts are not permitted to then take those funds and transfer them to the uh, current expense part of the budget or the general fund. Uh, it, that's A, not permitted at all, uh, and we are required to return any unused uh, funds from the reserve account back to the reserve account. Uh, for the maintenance part of the budget, uh, and I'll fix that, but uh, uh, under the uh, required maintenance for uh, the school, we have the Routine required maintenance that we have as a purchase service and also as a supply that's broken down by building. And then we identified um, maintenance projects that would be done either in-house or through the maintenance department uh, by contracted services. Uh, and they uh, all fall in the area of floor tile replacement or carpet replacement. Uh, again, the uh, larger scale projects uh, would be earmarked these type of projects would be eligible for state funding uh, if they were performed through a referendum and that would be the uh, pr preferred funding source. Uh, but these are uh, to keep an ongoing maintenance of all our school buildings. Again, some of it's carpet to carpet replacement, some of it's a uh, desire to go from carpet to VCT, uh, as well as just areas identified as the VCT flooring needs to be replaced as well. Again, it's not um, you know, uh, overly colorful with regard to the maintenance in the capital this year, but it, it fits the district's needs and the plan going forward. Any questions? Mr. Hall? Yeah, I have more of a comment than I guess a question, Brian. Um, 
I just, you know, again, being on the uh, facilities and uh, finance, finance and facilities committee and, and going through these numbers from the, from the very beginning and seeing how they evolved and, 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 you know, us looking at it and trying to figure out how to, you know, bring this down. I just wanted to, you know, again, um, talk to the, to the general public that, um, you know, we have a, you know, it com comes out to about an $82 million budget where 70 million is raised through the taxes of the people in Wall Township. Um, the other 12 million of the budget is either money that was in a reserve account that we had taxed previously, and then we bring it out of that account and put it into the budget. So it looks, it looks like, oh, the budget's bigger, but it's really just money that was kind of um, already raised in a previous budget that wasn't used, and that's why it's in a, a emergency reserve or a capital reserve and, and that type of thing. So. I think that I think overall keeping the budget uh, increase to a two percent um, tax levy, which is the most allowed by law, unless you want to use the bank cap, which was taxes that we didn't use in previous years, which the finance and facilities and I think the board agreed that in the economic climate we're in, we really tried to make sure that we didn't do that, that we stayed at the lowest you know um, lowest amount. Well, the, the, the amount that it was appropriate for us to do what we needed to do, but we could have theoretically, you know, increased it and, and went higher than the 2%. We, we elected not to do that um, and still be able to do all the things that we, we need to do in this budget. So I just wanted to, you know, again, the, the taxpayers to understand that, you know, you see 82 million when, the, when it comes out, 70 of it is really from the tax levy. The rest of it's state aid or tuition that we receive from uh, parents or, or money that we pull out of a reserve account that again was was there that was for money left over from before. So um, again, two percent um, increase um, on this particular budget. Again, this isn't final; will be final in two weeks. But um, again, I just want people to keep that in mind that that is you know I, I think we ended up doing a, a good job of making sure that we were um, stewards of the, of the of the taxpayers' money and we made sure we didn't. <clears throat> again, use the bank cap and, and, and go to 2.8% and do some of these other things that we recognized the, 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 the state of the, where, the world and, and we tried to keep it into a, a manageable amount. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Does anybody else? Mr. Wander. Are we still monitoring the air in the gym? Yes. That's just a service, right? On a quarterly basis. Okay, thank you. And to your point also, Mr. Hall, um, you know, it's a 2% increase on, on the tax levy, which is less than the budget, but our budget uh, from last current year to next year is going up 4%. But if you were to take out the $2 million in capital projects, which are being funded 100% from a reserve account, we'd be just over 1% in, in the budget, which... Right. I think most people, though, you know, again, uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of stuff when all this gets put out. I think the, most, the thing that most people are want, want to know is what's the deal with my taxes, right? Like, where, where are my taxes going up? Right? They, all the other stuff is kind of gobbledygook government talk. They don't want to know all that. They want to know what was my taxes, what are my tax, and so, the, so what, what I would say to people is your tax rate, you know, we're, we ra you know the tax rate is, we're raising 2% more in taxes than we did last, last, last year. 2% is something people can understand and put it into real terms. When everything else in the world is going up five, six, 7%, I think the taxes at the two percent is kind of looks like a bargain to some degree, when you, when, you know, and that in, from you're looking at it from that perspective. Again, hate to see any increase, but again, you know, things go up. We have to we have to raise more money, and again, we're keeping that to a minimum by, like I said, doing the things that uh, that we did in this budget to kind of uh, curtail costs. So I, I, I think you know, again, we we it's not perfect, but I think it's the best we could do under the constraints that we had with with. With, with those type of issues. Absolutely. Anybody else? Mr. Smythe, anything else? Uh, no. Oh, thank you. And, I, and you brought up a point that I meant to mention before, um, just to, you know, expel a, a false statement that was made earlier, that we as a board, we just didn't receive this five minutes before the meeting. Uh, these things are discussed in committee uh, every time we have a committee meeting. And there's a, yeah, and for budget season, and it, a lot of these things overlap. So sometimes you can sit in multiple committees and hear 
kind of the same thing multiple times. So uh, just so the public's aware, it's not that it's just being put in front of us now. We've had many discussions about it, and the purpose of this is for the public to uh, get an understanding of what we've been looking at uh, for the last several months. And also, this is a budget workshop meeting. So this is the, you know, the meeting that things are sometimes presented with the explanation uh, in, with the whole board. So, so that's the purpose of uh, a budget workshop meeting. Correct. But we hear it all anyway. So Absolutely. It's, so it's reinforcement. But thank, thank you for that. Uh, does anybody have anything else? Uh, seeing none, uh, at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to go into executive session uh, for a student matter and personnel. We will not be taking any action, and we will be adjourning from executive session. Could I have a motion on that? I'll make, make that. a motion. Uh, I'll second. Uh, who was it? Chris. Chris and then Adam. All in favor? Aye. All right. Anybody opposed? Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, hi, I'm Mr. Cranston, Dr. Rando. Thank Rando, you. thank you.